Welcome to Soltron. Today I'm just going to go over my thoughts on this oversized KO Optimus Primal figure that I found on AliExpress. So you can see the 360 view of him. He looks exactly like his leader class, leader class version of him. Um, but when we get to the size comparison, you'll see that's where the big differences are. But um, I never bought the leader class version of this figure because I believe that he is actually just a um, deluxe or Voyager class that's being overpriced. So I got this one on AliExpress. He was $33. And here's a look at the box he came in. I did, I guess, pay like a dollar or two extra so I could get a box. So. Nothing too special. They did do something interesting. This box is like embossed. So it is like a 3D box, which is pretty interesting actually. But um, I'm just gonna recycle I'm just gonna recycle it anyway. And here you can see him with other figures. So you could see how he scales with the Voyager Rhinox. He's much bigger. He's just entirely too big. I think Rhinox is supposed to be the same size or maybe a little bit bigger. And then with Cheetor, the Voyager, you can see that he definitely towers over him. And even leader class Megatron, he's a little bit bigger than Megatron. He looks like he could bully him. He looks a little bit bulkier, or more, more muscular anyway. But you can see with Cheetor, Cheetor looks very small compared to him, which I guess makes sense from the original Beast Wars. And then, of course, his Voyager um, Optimus Primal is much smaller. And then, compared to the Takara, um, even Beast Awakens Optimus Primal, he's pretty much the same size, which is ridiculous, because this figure is monstrous. He's, he's definitely bigger than a leader class figure. He's almost, he's getting to, like, Supreme class or commander class rather. So this guy is just way too big. Um, I was expecting a Voyager class figure. So this was really unexpected when I bought this figure. I didn't even know this was the oversized knockoff. I thought it was just a regular knockoff. And again, it was $33, which is cheaper than his official version. And he's so much bigger. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. But if we compare these two, I think the Beast Awakens Optimus Primal has a much worse head. Like the head sculpts are very different. And the KO just has a much cooler head sculpt, which is probably more movie accurate. Whereas this one is maybe based on some concept art or something. But this one looks so much cooler, much more Batman-esque. And you can even see from the detail work that this knockoff has a lot better detail, like the Studio Series figure. Like the indentations in the chest are just a lot deeper and look like multiple layers of metal, whereas this just looks like some decorations on his chest. I still prefer this figure because the gimmicks are really fun and he has a lot of nostalgia with the original Optimus Primal. And because his transformation is fun, unlike this guy, I find this guy's transformation to be really annoying, actually. Okay, we'll get to his alt mode in a second. So the first thing I want to talk about is like his plastic quality. He does feel pretty good. He's got like that hard old school plastic. So this is the kind of plastic that you would expect to break a little bit easier than a figure like this, which has like a plastic that has more flex to it. This guy has like that old school, thick, brittle kind of plastic. So if this guy takes a shelf dive, you might expect something to snap off or like a little tip of something to break. Whereas if I dropped this guy, I would be surprised if anything broke off of him. So that's one thing um, you can kind of tell from the plastic quality, he's a little bit different, but it's not really bad quality either because the plastic is pretty thick because he got they just upscaled everything. They didn't really um, tweak the tolerances or anything. It looks like they just expanded him. The other thing they 
gave him was all die cast feet. So all three parts of his feet, the heel, the toe, and the midsection, all of this is die cast, which is pretty good. Um, pretty good for posing because you can just set him down and he's going to just naturally help you pose. So the die cast feet are very nice. And then one thing I would, I think is different than the studio series. I never bought this guy because of the price is his head gets caught on the collar, his chin. There's just like a little bit too much plastic. So you do have to force it. And then if you do it enough, it eventually like reshapes the plastic enough. But it, his chin does catch on this. I don't, I don't think the Studio Series figure was like that. So at first I didn't think you could even rotate his head. You can, you just have to force it a little bit and you're going to bash a little bit of the plastic at the edge of his jaw, but not a big deal. And then I looked at a video of this guy and I think his head sculpt is actually different than the Studio Series figure. The Studio Series figure looks a little more squashed compared to this one. This one looks like they stretched his face out a little bit. But yeah, it's it's definitely just a really awesome looking sculpt. I am disappointed with the size. I wish he was smaller, but um, you can't really argue with this price. It's just, yeah, it's just great. But he comes with these giant swords. And like I said, they just upscaled this guy like 20%. So these are not even five millimeter posts. So these will not fit in the hands of anybody else. So that was kind of an odd choice. Um, they could have at least did that. And of course these swords, just like the studio figure, they can peg together. It's not really an issue. These posts are probably like four millimeters. It's just like all over the place. And then he does come with his chain pieces. And the tolerances on these are a little bit off too. And you can see there's like sprue marks, but these are very tight. And of course you could plug those into the sword. Nothing too interesting there. Um, he also comes with this ax, which I guess goes to Optimus Prime. Um, this is also kind of in that six millimeter size, sort of. This part looks like five millimeters. This part's like six millimeters. So you're, you're still not gonna slide this into a five millimeter hand. It's not gonna work. But if the hand can open and close, you can maybe snap it in there. Yeah, it looks like this will work for a five millimeter hand if it's an opening and close type. Otherwise, you're not gonna get past this lip right there unless you cut it. So he does come with this ax which is probably bigger than it's supposed to be. Now I'm really worried about snapping this off when you try to take it out of the hand. That was very close. Um, he also comes with whatever this is. I didn't watch the movie. I never do um, anymore. But yeah, it's very cool. It's probably bigger than the one that came with the Studio Series figure. It can plug into this. It's a trans warp key, I believe. And then he also, I guess I got like a pre a pre order bonus of some kind. So he also comes with this junk. And I do say junk, like this is also, this might be five millimeters right here, at the very tip. Nope, that's good. That's also like four millimeters. Um, you can peg these together. These feel very cheap. These feel like they would break very easily too. Just like the ax. And then he can hold them very poorly because they put no effort into making these. These are just very cheap accessories. And then same thing with these. These don't even seem, I don't even think these fit on the figure. Like you can get it in his fist like this, I guess. We'll try to do that in ape mode. Cause I guess these are ape links parts. But yeah, they don't even really fit. They're very loose. And they a five and a regular figure can't hold them either because they're six millimeters. So um, yeah, just fail all around. These are very cheap and plastic. I could easily snap this with my fingers right now. So don't, don't stress out about getting all these little extra bits. They're not good. Um, the one thing that's kind of annoying about his size and the die cast that they put on his feet is this 
you have to deal with this. And I think if he was smaller and didn't have die cast feet, this would actually feel a lot better. This, this leg's okay, but for some reason this one really sucks. So he feels loose and weak, but that's just because he has die cast in his feet. And I think his size works against him a little bit. The only other thing that I have, the only other issue I have with the quality, this guy is probably like a, a, yeah, probably an eight for quality. He feels pretty good, even counting these little issues, is that these don't peg in very well. There it goes. So that one is doing okay, but this one is it's just hopeless. It's never going to fit in. And I've tried doing this in several different ways. This just pushes against the arm pad here and it just it just won't lock up i think if this had more friction it would just close up and it'd be okay but it's it's just not willing to do it and i do worry about stressing the plastic a little bit but yeah he's got all the articulation same thing as the studio sphere figure studio series he's the same figure all right so here he is in beast mode that's how the box says you're supposed to transform him i don't Otherwise, I don't know why you use these butterfly joints. He can kind of beat his chest, I guess, but I think this doesn't look too bad. Eh, this does look more natural, though. So, there he is. Nah. Transformed, and then we can get a size comparison with the Beast Awakens, and you can see in alt mode, the Beast Awakens Primal is a little bit bigger because this one compacts down a little bit. So if you were going for like, I don't know, an Ape Link and Optimus Primal, this would probably make a good Ape Link if that DNA kit would ever come out. And then here he is with... Voyager Primal, you can see massive difference, and with Rhinox, he actually compacts down quite a bit, so he's act he actually doesn't look much larger than Rhinox at this point. They do look like they're in a similar scale, and then with Cheetor, which... These two together look like they're pretty, they're scaled pretty well because Cheetor is not supposed to be gigantic. So these two look pretty good together, or I guess Ravage. But yeah, um, so there he is. He's pretty good. There's a little quality control issues here and there, but for the most part, um, you're going to get the a Studio Series figure for a lot cheaper and uh, I feel a little bad about pirating this guy, but it's uh, otherwise I wouldn't have got this figure, so it's hard to say. Um, let me know what your thoughts are, and I'll see you in the next one.